but there was a tweet by Legion Sports, and we can put up the graphic right here if we have it. Uh, Legion Sports put up a tweet. says, LeBron says he'd still be as dominant if he never went to the Miami Heat. Um, and, and it says, agree. And LeBron James retweets it. He quote tweets it. He says, you damn right I still would be. I'm chosen. Ain't nothing changing that. Maybe less rings, but dominant, dominant in all caps, from start to finish, end quote, from LeBron James. So LeBron is is emphatic in the in, in the fact that saying like, yeah, it'd still be great regardless if I went to Miami. I don't know if any serious person would argue about whether or not LeBron James is a great player if he, if he doesn't go to Miami. But here's what I think is there's not that many athletes. I put LeBron at the tip top of this list. There's not that many athletes where the the – Forget the criticism. I would even argue the coverage around them is very inconsistent. And Le it's been the case for LeBron, I'd say, ever since he reached superstar status around 06, certainly 07. Remember, he had that game against the Pistons, the conference finals. What did he score? Was it 29 of the last the Cavs' last 30 points? It was a ridiculous performance. Helped him get to the finals and beat what was a dominant Pistons team in the early 2000s. Cavs got to the finals, lost to a significantly better Spurs team in 07. But you could see, like, okay, this 22-year-old kid, and we saw the chosen one when he's 16, like, this upward tra trajectory, if he lives up to the expectations, he very well could be in the GOAT discussion. Here we are in 2023. I think, in my view, at least for the last seven years, which is to me when LeBron at least entered the GOAT discussion, 2016, when he uh, when he knocked off my Golden State Warriors in, in the finals, coming back from 3-1 down, is I think how long we've been having that GOAT discussion. But again, I find the criticism and the coverage of LeBron James very inconsistent. So it's, uh, it only makes sense to lead off of a, a midway show, mid midweek show of Carving Up Live. It's time for Carving Up the Context. Let's talk about LeBron James, how dominant he would be with or without the Miami Heat. As Deion Sanders says, give me my theme music. This edition of Carving Up the Context, as mentioned in you know just a second ago, is about LeBron James. So, LeBron says he'd be just as dominant with or without the Miami Heat. So, first of all, he's, of course, 100% right. Um, he would still be the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. He would just take what's crazy is take out those four years of Miami. Let's say he doesn't play basketball. Let's go to an imaginary world where LeBron from 2010, from October of 2010 to June of 2014, does not play an NBA dribble. Still has two MVPs. Still has two championships and two finals MVPs and has won with two separate franchises. Of course, he departed Cleveland the second time for the Lakers in 2018. Yeah, he'd still have a pretty darn good resume. Now, would he be in the GOAT discussion? Well, we don't really deal in hypotheticals on this show. Um, it's it's hard telling. Do I think he would have won a championship from 2010 to 2014? I have my doubts. That Dallas Mavericks team took out the freaking Heatles in 2011. That team was on a mission led by Dirk Nowitzki and Jason Terry and Jason Kidd, Tyson Chandler. That was a heck of a basketball team. 2011 Mavericks had the Cavs gotten to the finals that year. If they beat the Heatles with prime LeBron, prime Wade, prime Bosh, probably wouldn't have knocked them out anyway. The Cavs, that is. 2012? Eh, Oklahoma City, young group, it's dicey. Who knows what happens? 2013, they dang sure don't beat the Spurs. 2014, LeBron with the Heat, albeit a declining Dwayne Wade and a declining Chris Bosh and an older roster. Spurs blew them off the floor, and LeBron was really the only great player on that Heat team. So my guess is no, he probably doesn't get a championship in Cleveland from 2011 to 2014. But what I think is interesting about LeBron is that two things. Number one, we, because I'm seeing a lot of people, oh, LeBron has to tell us, yeah, I'm the chosen one. He he has to tell us he's the chosen one. It's kind of like, remember when he at, he at the ESPYs, he made the official announcement he's coming back and basically sort of alluded to, this is not verbatim, this is paraphrasing, but basically alluding to the fact like, uh, basically kind of, you guys are lucky to see me and I said on my show, the next show, yeah, we are lucky to see LeBron. The NBA, and I'm here to tell y'all right now, I love Wimby. I think Wimby is going to be one of the greatest basketball players who ever lived. Said that last week. NBA will not be close to as popular as it is now when LeBron leaves. And LeBron's not even in his prime, but he's interesting. He talks about politics. He's still elite. 
He plays on a championship team. He plays on the most popular team, the Lakers, who happen to be in Hollywood, entertainment capital of the world. LeBron is still a very interesting figure. That's not to say Wimby won't be. Not to say Jokic isn't, although Jokic isn't close to as interesting as LeBron. Steph Curry's interesting, but by the time LeBron retires, Steph won't be too far behind, neither will Kevin Durant. Giannis may be exiting his prime by that point. So yeah, the NBA will not be the same without LeBron James. We get mad at athletes for being authentic. Remember these, you know, these press conferences like, oh, these coaches, these players, they give us these PC answers, these cookie cutter. Yeah, on to next week, the Bill Belichick, on to Cincinnati. Oh, we get the same old thing. But then you ask an athlete like LeBron James to be authentic and you don't like it. So I find that quite inconsistent. So that aside, the other inconsistency that I find in the coverage of LeBron James, we get mad at him for leaving Cleveland, departing Cleveland for Miami in 2010. We have the decision. Oh my God, so controversial, the decision. He announces he dumps Cleveland. That'd be like if your ex-girlfriend dumped you. I'm talking to guys, obviously, heterosexual guys. If your girlfriend dumped you on national television, said, we're done in front of millions of people. Be quite humiliating. And I understand how the city of Cleveland, I don't have a lot of love for the city of Cleveland. I like the people. I just don't like their attitudes or sports. But I understand how the city of Cleveland could feel betrayed. Man, you just went on national television, interviewed by Jim Gray on ESPN for the whole world to see. Yeah, I'm done with you guys. Now, LeBron didn't say it in that tone, but that's how Cleveland took it. They can take it however they want to take it. People feel different ways in different situations. But uh, LeBron donated a lot of money to the Boys and Girls Club, so it wasn't all, you know, let's let's pull back a little bit. It wasn't all bad. We get mad at him for going to Miami, but then we're like, oh, he wouldn't have been as dominant in Cleveland. Well, what do you want LeBron James to do? Stay in an organization that would not and could not provide him the necessary help to win a championship? I looked this up. On the old Wikipedia, I know teachers, college and um, high school, you know, they tell you not to look at Wikipedia as a source, uh, but in some instances, you you should. It's the quickest way to, to get it. Let's look at the Cavaliers' first round draft picks since 03, from 03 to 2009, which was the start of LeBron's last season of his first stint in Cleveland. Let's look at their first round picks, shall we? Luke Jackson in 2004. Hmm. Didn't pan out. Shannon Brown in 06. J.J. Hickson in 08. And Christian, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, genuinely, Iunga. Again, I genuinely hope I'm saying his name correctly. Michael Jordan, on the other hand, you look at some of the first-round picks uh, since the Bulls took him third overall in 1984. Pretty good basketball players, I must say. They traded for Scottie Pippen. In 1986, they drafted Horace Grant. In 1987, they drafted Tony Kukoc in the second round in 1990. So, Jordan's organization did did their job. Is that to diminish Michael? Of course not. While I may think LeBron's the GOAT, that's not to diminish anything that Michael Jordan did. He is undeniably, I've heard people try and put Kareem over Michael. Love Kareem. He is not Michael. He's not. Uh, objectively, he was not a better basketball player, at least in the NBA, than Michael Jordan. Got a lot of numbers to back that up. We can do that for another show. But what do you want LeBron James to do? Stay in Cleveland, where they were putting unknown guys, unproven guys, and frankly, guys who weren't that good? I mean, who is it? Let's na- name the, the second best Cavalier. When LeBron James was there, Zadrunas Ilgauskas, Mo Williams, Anderson Verajao. These aren't exactly household names, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Jordan got Scottie Pippen, one of the 50 greatest basketball players who ever lived. He got Horace Grant, who won a championship with him in Chicago and got to a finals with Orlando in the mid-90s. He got B.J. Armstrong. He got Tony Kukoc, who was, by the way, the best European player to come to the NBA at that point. He got Steve Kerr, who was the best shooter in the NBA. And before that, he got John Paxson, who was one of the best shooters in the NBA. I'm supposed to rely on Dan Gilbert, which God bless Dan Gilbert. He's been through some some stuff off court, and, and God bless him. I, I'm not. This is not a personal attack on him or, or anybody affiliated with him. But this notion that We get mad at LeBron for leaving Miami or Cleveland for Miami to go win rings. But we also get mad at him for saying he would have been just as dominant in Cleveland. 
So I'm lost in what do we want LeBron to do? And this has been this has been the story throughout LeBron's career. He can't win. Well, Jordan never saw a game seven. Yeah, Jordan also never came back from a 3-1 deficit on a 73-win team because he never faced a 73-win team. He never faced a 73-win team that had the second or third best player on planet Earth and Kevin Durant the last two years LeBron was in Cleveland. Matter of fact, the best team ever, at least I think, the 2017 Warriors, you know, the only team to put one single solitary defeat on their postseason re resume is LeBron and the Cavs. By the way, LeBron leaves Cleveland, worst team in the league. They get Kyrie Irving as a result. LeBron leaves Cleveland again in 2018. Bottom two record in the NBA. You kind of get the kind of get the picture. Heck, Miami, very well run organization. I still wish LeBron had stayed in Miami for his sake. I think he could have gotten more championships out of it. Although that would have cost some championships for my Warriors. But another discussion for another show, of course. Miami missed the playoffs in 2015 after LeBron left. This is with Dwayne Wade. This is with some of the guys that was on that roster the year prior. This is with Eric Spolster, who's a genius head coach, Pat Riley, running the operation of that, that basketball organization. The inconsistency in how LeBron James is covered in terms of his outspokenness. We want him to chase Jordan, but we don't like the way he chases Jordan. Why is that? There's no one way to be great. There's no one way to be the GOAT. That's why I love sports. That's why I love, let's use an NFL example. That's why I love the NFL and NFL quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, great quarterbacks come in all different shapes and sizes. They can have the whole package like Patrick Mahomes. They can be a great pocket guy like Joe Burrow. They can be an efficient guy like Dak Prescott. They can have a big arm like Josh Allen. They can be as mobile as Lamar Jackson. They can have a similar whole package like Justin Herbert. There is no one way to be great. And there's no one way to be the greatest of all time. And I think LeBron James and the way he's pursued that, Pretty admirable. And that's not even taking into account. We talk about greatest ever. Then I'll get to the comments. We talk about greatest ever. That does not necessarily mean off-court stuff. I've heard people talk about, I, I heard someone today, all oh, the shoes with Jordan. I've seen college football programs have the Jordan logo. Yes, Michael should be given nothing, nothing but credit for it. But if we're going to go off-court, are we going to talk about Jordan's, I'll be nice, questionable off-court life? And highly questionable and disastrous run as the Charlotte organization owner, the Bobcats slash Hornets. If we're going to talk about off court, let's talk about all of it off court. LeBron James off the court, family man, never been in trouble with the law. By the way, was the equivalent of a Hollywood child star because he came in, he was 16 years old, deemed the chosen one. And LeBron, because he has the most mature emotional makeup of any athlete I think I've ever seen in my life, given where he was at in that position at 16 years old. You saw in that tweet, he embraces it. Off the court does not matter to me if we're talking about simply greatest basketball player ever, but if it matters to you, let's talk about the whole conversation, not just the parts that make your guy feel good and your guy look good. That's all I'm saying. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.